Well, hello everyone. Happy Thursday and happy day 30 of our 30 days and 30 ways to better health and better wellness and mental health. Um, I have today, I am Rashonda Thorne. You probably know that already, but I also have with me Natalie Jensitz. Hello, everybody. We made it to 30 days, Rashonda. Yay! <laughs> It's, I will tell you, it's been great, Natalie. Um, I, I, I can only express how taking this time every day has really changed my perspective and kept me thinking positive through this, this lockdown situation. So I'm glad that you were a part of it. Thanks, Rashonda. I agree. It's definitely, when I stop and think about what we might be doing otherwise, then yeah, it's definitely yeah. been keeping me in a good space mentally. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, as you know, for those who have been, been able to catch a few of the different ones, you know, I want you to recognize when we say 30 days, 30 days, 30 ways. The reason why, because even though we use 30 days, it's a way, good way to just kind of round it off as far as you know, how long we're going to be honest. But we found 30 ways each day to increase our health and our mental wellness. So it was a lot. But just to show you that there are so many ways that you can do different things to work through these times. So I'm hoping that you guys get a chance to go back to some of those particular segments and figure out what resonates to you and see how they can change your life. Um, so in the midst of changing your life, right now, during the COVID crisis, we're in it's high frequency of all kind of news, all kind of messaging, all kind of things just swarming around us, you know? Um, so the question you should ask yourself, how much out of all of it is motivating? It's thought provocative, thought provocative, and were there intentional conversations that give you tools to apply to your lives now, especially now? Um, but how can you apply it to your life moving forward? So, you know, you can probably say there's not a lot. So that's one of the reasons why we chose to create this particular project and this segment series. So we hope that um, you have taken it into and embedded it into your life and have found some, some tools that can help you as you, you go through these times. Um, and so, we're going to just kind of give you a few, uh, we've done 30, but we're going to talk about the last half of it. We're going to pick a few that we felt resonated to us and why, and then we will, um, hopefully that opens up the door for you to watch them too. So Natalie, I'll let you go ahead and start. Um, okay. I know you have some great ones and just kind of tell me what were some of the ones out of the last 15 that we've done that really stood out to you? Okay. Well, I do, I want to piggyback off what you said too first, Rashana, because you know, we did create this to try to help people make it through the shutdown, but yeah, definitely apply it ongoing. It's stuff that you can apply anytime. And then if we hit another rough spot down the road, you're going to be well on your way to get through it more easily next time. Right. The other good thing about 30 days is they always, I hear that like 21 days of a new habit is what you need to do to try to help make it stick. So if you can try to do something for 21 days, which isn't 30, but I mean, you know, it's not far off. If you can keep something going for a few weeks in a row, it's more likely to stick as a habit. So just keep that in mind as you go back through our episodes and decide what ones you, you know, want to work on next. So one of, a couple of my favorites were getting creative with the things that you miss, which I believe was day 25. And then yesterday, yeah, yesterday was day 29, countering <laughs> negativity. <laughs> Told you math is not my best. No. <laughs> um, I like these two because they kind of drove you, in, well, I'm just saying you in general, because they drove me, they probably drove a lot of people to think outside of the box and come up with solutions when you think you might otherwise be trapped. You know, it's like, no, no, there is a way around this. There's a workaround and you have the choice to see that or to still feel ca caged in and kind of helpless. And it just highlighted the idea that you can, you can always find something, even if it's your own reaction, to take a little bit more control of and give yourself a little more freedom. I mean, in the end, that's what it, it does. You're you're opening up avenues so that you don't feel trapped and you're looking at things in a different way. So for date night, that's when we had the kids cook us dinner. Of course, no wonder that's one of my favorites. That was amazing. Um, 
And then for countering negativity, we got into a good, this was a great topic that you chose that I wasn't sure about at first. And then um, it, we got, we hit it from two angles, you know, like you, you have literal negative outputs that you're listening to or watching every day that you can control, but also you have some negative receptors potentially in yourself and you're receiving other people's messages or demeanors as negative and you're able to separate yourself from those if you work on it and make an make an effort to do that you can choose to respond differently and so i think though that's a very powerful thing to be able to do and i think it's important <coughs> and often overlooked yeah so those are um you know what? That's why we had 30, 30 opportunities because you never know what comes through our thought process as we're thinking of new ideas. And that, I really think that the last one hit home for a lot of, a lot of people. And I'm kind of glad that we had a chance to talk through that one. Yeah, yeah. it was great. So what about yeah. you? What were a couple of your favorites in this last half? Well, two of them, the two that I selected uh, was the one about stepping up to serve others. And I have... I, I, I guess what I do for a living, I'm all about helping others. I'm always volunteering. I'm always, I'm always looking to find ways to help other people be happy. And so I think this is easy for me to, to really just be able to pause and the dealing with what I'm, what I, what I'm dealing with at my level uh, with the limitations and be able to think of others during this time. So um, some, of the, some of the examples I gave was, you know, how can we, you know, still show gratitude towards others? How can we still affirm um, others uh, by keeping our dignity? You know, we think that, you know, when you help others in these times, we have to physically go and touch them or hug, you know, give something to them. There are so many different ways we can help others. I mean, we can kind of be there to go to person and get the grocery that they need. And we don't have to go in the store to get it. We can have them order it. We can pick it up, drop it off, in our, put it in our trunk, drive it to their home, drop it off in their front, front door. You know, um, there's other um, um, delivery services that we can perhaps just purchase food and just have it sent, sent to them home, to their homes. Um, there's things we can do. We can go outside and cut their, cut their yard or do their um, outdoor um, landscape or something like that. None of that uh, is, is compromising social distancing, but it probably help, it probably is helping that person, especially they don't have the ability to. Um, and or even some, some, something to give a smile to their faces. So how can you, we find ways to um, think about serving others even during these times? Um, the most hardest thought, things to do, but this is a time where you want to really show your ability to, to not always focus on self. And the last one, this is what I've been doing over the last two weeks, is finding ways to work more efficiently and effectively uh, with the lax and everything from school to not having to physically go anywhere. You just get caught up in just kind of taking things as they go and then things start moving slow. You forget some things you need to do or your date, your deadlines aren't as tight. You know, how can we begin to work more efficiently, you know, by recreating our, our day? You know, I create a list every single night <laughs> and all different things that I need to do and I give time frames so I can know how much time I have to really push this through which takes away from me getting distracted by notifications on social media or someone texting me. I know to just kind of block it out because I dedicated my time to complete this one task. I found that when I've done that, my days, I feel so much better in the day. I feel like I didn't really waste time. I was working more efficiently and more effectively. So I feel like the tips that we talked about in that particular segment could really apply to those of us who are kind of stuck at home right now. Um, so those were the two that I chose, Natalie. Okay, that makes sense. Those are those are good ones too. I uh, think we had some good thoughts on both of those. So, yeah, I can't believe it's day thirty. <laughs> so you think about all the things we covered. I'm not sure if you're going to say this or not, but like, I don't want to. I don't want to let this 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 be not said. But for those who hadn't got a chance to look at it, we covered everything from not just your mindset and your health. We talk about certain food, we talk about fitness, we talk about sleep, we talk about mm -hmm. screen time, we talk about allergies. I mean, we, we were the gamut on it, so, but they're all needed in, this, in these times. Yeah, and we, I feel like it was more unique than some other uh, things that you might see or listen to out there right now that are 
uh, I think it's more unique because we do hit the mindset piece and we are bringing in our day-to-day -day examples, showing how the other people can apply them. Just like right now, go away from the screen and, and do this. And this is how you can do it, not just physically, but change the mindset behind it. So I hope that it's been real helpful for everybody. Um, yeah. We're going to leave these online mm -hmm. for, I don't know how long, why not for yes. forever, for eternity. <laughs> They're going to be on both of our Facebook pages, Instagram and YouTube channels. And yeah, go back and review them. Ask friend to watch with you share them yep. um yeah we've got another great event cooking in the works that is hopefully a one in-person event but we'll have to see how everything unfolds yeah. with the coronavirus <laughs> and we will definitely keep you posted on that yeah <clears throat> it'll basically be kind of the culmination of different parts of some of the things we talked about because it's going to be focused around wellness and just your body and your health and <clears throat> when we get when we finally get to a place where we can not be subjected to our homes we're going to enjoy those times being around other people and having these conversations kind of resetting ourselves and getting ourselves back into our new our new new normal so we hope that you guys are Keep keep in tune with our and follow us as we're moving forward. And as soon as we um, know when we can have that 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 event, we will be posting it. We will be marketing it, so you know exactly what it's about and when it is. And hopefully, you'll be able to come and bring a friend. Yeah, you think we might talk about about food a little bit? <laughs> yes, a little. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. We've got yeah. another person involved that's really amazing too. So. Stay tuned for more info on that, you guys. Thanks a lot for listening and just joining us in this journey. Yes. Hope you enjoy 30 Days, 30 Ways to Better Health and Mindset. Yes. Take care, guys. See you Bye -bye. soon later. Bye.